Okay, so it's the moment you've all been waiting for. Not my silk pajamas. Um, we're going to start recording audio. So let's talk about an interface. In order to record audio, you're really going to want to invest in an interface. What is an interface? It is a little box that you plug in a microphone because you'll notice like with a um, computer, you've got this little eighth of an inch little doohickey thing. And while there is a way to kind of get the input of a computer, it's just, if you're going to be recording, you got to get an interface if you're going to be recording audio. Um, so, you know, a microphone has what's called, as probably many of you know, an XLR input. So we need something to plug that in, and then we need something to boost the microphone signal to get it into the computer to make it sound good. So interfaces have a built-in mic prees, and it connects your computer so it translates all the data that you're recording into the Pro, into Pro Tools. So I have an Apollo Twin. Uh, I like the Universal Audio stuff, and this is also Thunderbolt. So it's faster than FireWire, USB, um, and I just really love the sound of these guys. Also, what's really great about the Universal Audio stuff is that they have their own plugins. And when you use the Universal Audio plugins, it uses the DSP, the, which means digital signal processing. It uses the brain of this thing as opposed to the brain of your computer. And it saves you more processing power on your computer so you can use more plugins on your Mac and then use the Univer Universal Audio plugins on here. When you buy a Universal Audio interface, the bigger the interface, the more plugins you get, but you get a couple of plugins, and then they have this online store that's connected to their software where you can buy plugins. So it's uh, it gets really addicting buying plugins. I'm a, I'm a plugin whore. Um, so we're gonna start recording, and when you buy an interface, you usually have to download drivers and the software that comes with it. So nowadays, uh, with most interfaces that I know of, they all have their own software. So Universal Audio has a great, great website where you download their software. They have videos explaining how to set it up. So I've downloaded all the Universal Audio software. There was only one download and then one installation. And it puts all the stuff you need to, for Pro Tools to see your interface. So we're gonna boot up Pro Tools and we're gonna make a new session and I thought we'd just go ahead and start a song from scratch. And I thought just for fun, um, in honor of David Bowie, uh, we could have some fun and do Major Tom. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna play, it's pretty simple. It's like C to E minor. And you'll notice as Pro Tools is booting up right now, scanning plugins, and you'll notice now we have, feel the love. It's thinking. There we go. So there's my plugins. Now you've got all these UAD plugins. So these are all the plugins that I have with my Apollo. So before I was just, I had nothing connected to the uh, computer. I was, I'm using a old, I guess probably a four year old MacBook, And I was just using uh, headphones and the headphone jack. And right now I'm still using this USB microphone I'm talking into. Okay, we're gonna start over. We're not gonna go back to my first session. We're gonna create a brand new session. And you'll notice here where it says create from template. A template, as you may know, is a pre-prepared session with all the tracks set up. Whoever set up the templates in, in Pro Tools is just thinks people are rocket scientists or something. When you open them up, they're really overwhelming. And also, if you use a template, you never know how to create your own tracks and send your own reverbs and all that kind of crap. So I think it's really important that when we start sessions, we start from scratch. So we're going to call, call this Major Tom and not Tim, Tom. And we're going to just for now keep it 40 for one, 24 bit. And again, right here where it says location, we're not using our desktop. We're going to our documents folder. We're going to the folder we made called Pro Tool Sessions. If you don't have a folder, create a new folder down here and save it in that. But I already have my folder. Now I have this session in it, and now I have, bam, um, Major Tom is going in here, okay? So now we have a blank session, and um, I'm going to get flack from a lot of people about, because they used to say many years ago to always record audio to a separate hard drive. And again, I covered this in an earlier video, but th th that was when hard drives were 5,400 RPMs. So the external hard drive 
um, was had to be faster because the the internal hard drives of Macs were too slow to record audio. So no wonder it caused problems. But now we're talking about SSD drives and and the speeds are completely different. And I'm not condoning recording to your internal drive. We're just learning. This is just we're putting on training wheels and we're using the internal drive just to learn. When you get up and running, you become Pro Tools experts, as you all will. Uh, you will get an external hard drive. They're a hundred bucks, and you'll get another one to back up your stuff. And we'll get there. But for now, just safety to documents folder. We're only doing a couple tracks of audio, and um, so nobody give me hate mail because of recording to the internal drive. Okay. So we're gonna make a. We're gonna first of all make sure that Pro Tools is seeing our interface. We're gonna go right here to setup. We're going to go to Playback Engine, okay? So, and there it shows, Universal Apollo, right there. Before, I was just using the Pro Tools built-in app, but don't worry about any of this stuff. I'm using the Pro Tools Apollo. The other thing you're going to want to know is when this is low, you want it to be low for recording, high for mixing. Don't worry about what the heck it means. Just if you are recording and the buffer height size is way up high, when you record something, it's going to be a little delayed. It's called latency. So the lower the buffer size, the less latency you have. So we're going to do that. Um, another thing you may want to look into is delay compensation, which we'll deal with later, but just probably want to turn that on. And low latency monitoring, I think if we have a plug-in like uh, Reverb, I think it's going to mute that. So, But you can record with that on too. Sorry, I'm getting texted. So we're going to create a new audio track just to make sure we have level. I have my, uh, I have a Shure SM58 plugged into my XLR input one of the Apollo. The other thing is, before we make a, a track, is we're going to look at what's called I.O. settings. And basically, you remember on consoles and you put a big thing of tape and you'd write track one, track two, guitar, vocals. That's all that is. So it probably is a good idea if you go to under setup I.O., and you come up here and you're like, oh, okay, what is this? And this is the outputs, monitor outputs, and that's what we want to use. You'll see here input and output. So here we're using mic line. You're probably not going to be using all of these. So at some point we're going to deal with that. But just know these are, you can actually you can rename these really simply. Let's, in fact, let's do that. Just, just double click and we're going to call this mic in one. And I'm going to highlight that, command C to copy. I'm going to go to number two and paste. I'm going to hit the backspace and go mic in two. And there we go. And now when we create a new audio track, track new mono, because we're just going to record an acoustic guitar and we create. And now we've got, it looks really simple, mic in one. We're going to put it in record and we're going to hope for level. Yes. Awesome. First thing we're going to do, name the track. All right. So we're going to name the track. And this is going to be AGT1, Acoustic Guitar 1. And because I always number my stuff, because you're going to be doing multiple takes, it's a really good idea to number, to always start with Vox 1, Vocal 1, Vox 2. So when you're rec recording, you keep track of the numbers because you're going to start edit editing them. So say we did Acoustic Guitar 1, 2, 3. When you edit them together, you'll be, oh, I like the ending of 3, I like the beginning of 1. Like, And you'll know by the names, because you named your track, what when you look at the waveform on the screen you'll know what's what right okay so we're gonna say okay and then what's the next thing we're gonna do to record this song we need a tempo so we also need a chord chart we're gonna get there too so we're gonna turn off the conductor in the transport window window transport and we're gonna go to the tempo field right here remember and we're gonna tap it to what you, you think your tempo is of ground control to major tom so i'm just gonna off the top of my head okay you ready for this ground control to major tom ground control <laughs> oh you get the idea okay so we're about 73 we can change it whatever and now we're going to create a click track create click track if you've watched the other videos we're going to scroll up we click on the click track plugin and we know we've saved the g shaker so now, I don't have the speakers plugged in right here, but now we should have, we're going to hit Command S to save, and now we're ready to record guitar. Woo! Okay, let's move on.